right guys, um, it has come to my attention that I never did a formal introduction the other day. And first and foremost, I'd like to start off by saying uh, thank you guys who have already subscribed and are following us on Instagram and uh, YouTube. And I am Sharky McGee, and this is Sharky McGee TV Productions. And so, welcome. <laughs> welcome aboard for our maiden voyage and all the stuff we've done to this point. Getting here, you know, getting the Hobie, making our decision coming to this crucial point of the beginning of our journey as far as on the water sports, um, you know, on the water, fishing, all of it. I mean, this is not my intro to beginning fishing, but kayaking, yes, 100%. I am a newbie to the extent of being a newbie. Everything I know is, you know, from six or eight months of research that I did beforehand before I made the decision to dive headfirst into this and um, go with some great, great products. Like the Hobies you see behind me here. Um, definitely one of the most sound investments I've ever made. From the second I made my pre-order purchase of that 2019 over there and snagged my dad one of these last of the 2018s that was on the floor so we could kind of go out and explore these Hobies on the water together and um, do some fishing like we've always done but in a different way um, and kind of get into a, a good water sport. Um, I think from the time I've made this a reality, I have been so at peace with this whole situation and getting in these things, I can only tell you it's it's only gotten, you know, stronger. It's it's kind of an addiction at this point. Um, you know, my wife's been very supportive, so this is one of those things where I'm kind of diving head in and uh, for any of you guys looking to get into the sport of kayaking or the water sports in general or just you like fishing, Whatever your reason for wanting to, to look into getting into kayaking, I strongly recommend you try it. You get out somewhere, you, they've got rental places all up and down the coast. They got rental places all up in, in, you know, some of these cities, I live in San Antonio area, so it's, uh, we got one place here, but Austin Canoe and Kayak has been my hub for Hobie. <laughs> and they're an authorized dealer for many other great brands. They've got Old Town and Jackson and, um, native watercraft uh, all these great brands um, they definitely but you know when I made my decision I went through and looked at all these brands side by side off and on the water and um, I gotta say guys Hobie just kind of spoke for itself on this one so thanks Hobie um, but without further ado we're gonna get this uh, introduction wrapped up in this Hobie Lawrence insulation <laughs> instructional underway and um, Welcome to Sharky McGee TV. Again, I am Sharky McGee and thanks for watching. Okay guys, uh, we're back today. I'm going to work on the Lorance installation video. This was already done um, about a week ago. I don't know, a few days. It's been a while. But uh, the problem was that I'm new to the GoPro altogether. And this GoPro 7 has been... I've pulled my hair out. Uh, let me put it that way. There's no instructions of these things. Um, as a first time user to GoPro, once I figured out what I was doing, this thing is amazing. It shoots very good quality video at 1080p. Um, the 4K shoots very nice, although it does not support stabilization, which again, I wish they would have been up front with that instead of you having to figure it out on your own. But um, definitely, I, I don't have many complaints other than it wasn't very user friendly for somebody who's never used a GoPro before. Um, so definitely there's a lot of videos out there that I'll just tell you things about the GoPro 7 None of them are relevant for what a person not knowing anything about a GoPro Needs to know as far as hey, there's a preference menu and there's a squat down and touch interface and all these things Would have been nice with some instructions not just a 15 step pictorial on how to get the batteries out So <laughs> GoPro come on man work with me here I've never owned one before and there's a hundred million other people who haven't ever owned one either so um, definitely that's a thing that was just uh, my only gripe, I guess. Again, the video quality on these things is amazing. So I've got no complaints there. The stabilization, 100%. You saw my videos. So the, the questions about the wind, some of the stronger wind comes through. Um, definitely it picks up some ambient occlusions and sounds, but what can you say, man? You're in nature and you get what you get. Uh, that's part of being out filming on the go is the ability to kind of have that surround capture you know if it's a windy day you're going to know about it um obviously it did better in, in some of that high wind than um you know some of the earlier models have been on videos 
as far as how loud it was while I was talking and the wind was going on and the wind really only affected things if it was um, kind of you know like head on in the microphone and things like that when it was you know crosswind or I was traveling various certain other situations the wind really wasn't that big a deal guys so keep that in mind um, it was from 10 to 14 miles an hour all day so um, that video on the water the maiden voyage video that is um, pretty solid as far as what this thing can film like I wish I could have had a lot more in the video but due to a limited GoPro space or uh, battery uh, capacity and, and I say limited again it was probably my newness to this whole situation why the GoPro was acting up in the first place it wasn't, and it wasn't acting up I just I had it recording for like half an hour <laughs> unprovoked um, at one point when I thought it wasn't recording and when I thought it was recording it wasn't and so uh, a lot of that was just user error though I'm just gonna have to get familiar with it guys that was my first real I'm using this thing um, probably should have took a week or two to get familiar with it before I I tried to get out there but I was so excited about getting that on the water video with the Hobie I couldn't help myself so that's why I got the GoPro <laughs> so um, we're gonna get this installation video underway and guys I'm gonna keep these clips about three and a half minutes the most hopefully um, just because I don't want to have any problems editing later I want to make this easier on myself so I can get this video on tonight for you guys um, again I believe it's Friday uh, October the 25th somewhere around there <laughs> Uh, we're gonna get this underway again when you see a screen wipe I promise I will do everything detailed step by step if I stop recording I'm gonna pick up immediately and start recording right from there um, so there's no lapse in like oh what did you do in this step I'm not gonna miss anything I'm not leaving anything out because I'm literally gonna and you know film three minute segments on everything and piece it together so <laughs> let's get this underway Okay guys, first of all, I'm going to start with this little access hatch here. You're going to take this bucket out. And just kind of close that for a second. We'll come back to this in a minute, but this bucket is actually going to be very useful for this entire process. So, without further ado. Okay guys, so I'm going to start by taking this uh, Guardian shield off. There's three screws here. This is very easy. These are machine screws. They have their own little screw path here. Um, that is also machined. It's a nice little, you're not gonna have to worry too much about doing this part. This is like the easy part for sure. Now we took that Hobie bucket out guys. I'm putting all my screws and stuff in that Hobie bucket because this is gonna make things a whole lot easier when it comes time to put this back together. You don't gotta worry about, oh, all my pieces have gotten off on me everything's gone awry that is not an issue and, and once again I'm doing this from the reverse um, really I've already installed this thing and it works but we had eight hours of footage go to waste so it's not totally to waste I still have it but it'll be quite some time before it's gonna have anything done with it so now that we got this to this point I got that off I'm gonna go up top and I gotta actually feed these wires through here so I'm gonna go do that in a second guys and we'll be right back with the, uh, the rest of this Okay guys, this is your through hole plug on the Hobie. It is um, got three little screws here. And so, you can't see the point here since. There's one, there's two, and there's three. So we're gonna take this thing out and we're gonna run these wires. This is the uh, wires for the power and the transducer. And so we're gonna get these out of here and I'm just gonna unscrew this through hole plug and I will be right back. All right guys, I just situated the screws for the through hole plug into that bucket and I'm gonna take this off. Now you're gonna wanna be very, you're gonna be very careful to not lose this gasket right here because that is a big deal. Um, so this is a, Growing piece. Okay, so that's the plug that I chose, and you can see the holes in there, and that just again slides right into this through hole plug and makes a sweet little connection for your gear there. 
MK guys, can you see this? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, this is another through hole plug right here in the center. This is what your transducer wire runs through. And we're gonna take this off, just back this transducer wire out of here. And I hope you guys understand that I'm gonna have to do some things I'm not really particularly fond of doing here in a second with this wire, like rebunching it, reconsolidating. <laughs> But I'm doing this because, like I said, there wasn't a whole lot of videos out there on this. And what I was out there, I don't feel like they showed enough of what somebody like me needs to see for it to be kind of like, oh, okay, I get what I'm doing. Um, again, that might just be me, but when it all comes down to it, at the end of the day, I'm a very visual learner. So hopefully this will help somebody out there that doesn't quite get it. Um... All right, so I'm gonna cut here and I am gonna get under the sink again and try to start feeding this wire through and we will get through this plug here in a second. Okay guys, a couple of things. First of all, your tools that is a basic Phillips head screwdriver. Um, for stuff like this, we're not gonna mess with these inside tracks. Um, these screws are for, if you wanna use your retractable shield and put your uh, total scan transducer on. I opted out of that. I'm not using one. It's a kayak, not a bass boat. But <laughs> uh, again, an adjustable wrench, a uh, smaller one preferably because you're not going to be putting a whole lot of torque on these bad boys. You want them just kind of like snug tight, but uh, definitely the right tools will get you there. An adjustable wrench and a Phillips is all you'll need for this installation. I use this Phillips uh, number two, I believe. It's either number two or number three tip. Um, to get everything out of this thing without without a problem that might be a number three but i believe it's a number two um so and then a zip tie optional this uh transducer here comes with a little bread tie kind of deal to on the wires you'll undo this here in a second we'll get to that um but definitely uh it's your option i'm gonna once i'm done with this use the zip tie kind of get it all tacked up in the hole so it's just you know nice and clustered together not moving around or nothing don't have a bunch of loose wire in there um this is the Nakwa 10 amp battery and connector i've already pre-connected the um fuse to the positive um this is your ram mount holder for the lorance i've already mounted this ram ball but i think next weekend i'll probably come back and do a video on the putting together the ram mount um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, some people like visuals. Um, I am definitely a visual person, but let's get this bad boy installed. So, again, I'm using the insert bucket here. Um, whichever Hobie model you have, it's going to have something like this somewhere. More than if it's a newer one, especially. Um, this is a great idea, guys. You get all your stuff in here. You're not worried about it flying, flying around. You're not worried about losing these little tiny screws and things like that it's pretty legit um so the mounting hardware the bolt that comes with your lorance has a problem getting through this uh little slot piece there this right here the it kind of gets like that and you just feel like you're gonna break this thing and it's no good so hobie in your hobie kit when you get your brand new hobie 19 or 18 or be it whatever year you have i assume you're going to be 19 up at this point if you're buying a brand new hobie because i don't know if anybody's still selling the 18s now that the 19s are out but um i know that austin canoe and kayaks is on to 19s and forward now so <laughs> we're we're pushing forward guys but the hobie kit when you open up your secondary there's a package that's got two scupper plugs also i'm going to make a comment about this I did this in my previous video, but I can actually show you on this one. I know what I'm kind of doing now. So the scupper plugs go on these scupper holes right there. Um, there's four scupper holes on the new 2019. It came with two scupper plugs. <laughs> That's kind of funny, guys. Uh, but again, it's not a huge deal. I don't use the scupper plugs at all, but they look like little black shot glasses. They're rubber, um, obviously. Uh, and the 18s only had two scupper, scupper holes, so there was, you know, that's why two plugs, but definitely there is, inside the plugs, there's two rubber washers and a little plug leash that you can tie them together with, so they're not single floating around 
you know, it's a little cord, um, kind of like this, but thinner. Um, again, in the first video, I had all that stuff out, but I am obviously in a different point here. <laughs> we kind of didn't, couldn't use the first video. I'm redoing this to kind of show you guys what's going on. So I don't have all the unbagging everything, but I'm pretty much going to show you everything you need that's relevant. There's two of these bolts that come with it in your Hobie kit. And there's one of them that has these things on it. And you'll be looking at those like, what in the world is that? And they've got uh, these little Loctite washers. Um, now there's a short bolt and there's a long bolt. The long bolt is gonna be for the back and the short bolt is actually gonna be to hold your transducer to the transducer mount. Also in that Hobie bag, you will have these transducer mount pieces that have these little tracks on the side of them or a slot they actually slide right in here like that let's see if i can get this little. they go up and down that track so you can adjust them however you want it's pretty legit guys now the the mounting hardware that came in the hobie bag comes with these things uh two of these You'll notice them because they're kind of weird looking. And I'm going to cut here real quick and get a different section started. So bear with me for two seconds. Okay, guys. So as we were talking about these things, these things just slot right in. And they're so easy to do. Um, they're so precisely formed that you can just slot them in right next to each other just like that. Okay. And this long bolt will actually go right through the center here. This off that I almost broke my cardinal rule. Okay, and these washers that come on it actually slot right alongside this track here, which is really cool. So I'm just gonna feed one of these through here like this. Bam. Oh I just slotted it right into the little crevasse here. Alright. Okay. Sorry guys, I've lost my camera operator, so I'm kind of doing this on my own now. Okay. I'm just gonna slide that down. And I've actually got this backwards. I'm gonna turn this belt around. Ah! This part makes zero difference to anybody else, but to me it makes a difference just because I like holding the screwdriver with my left hand. Okay. Get that thing started. Oh, I already messing it up. Okay, sorry about that. I way overcomplicated this, but when you put this piece on, it looks just like that. Now I didn't tighten these, so this will actually slide slide up and down still okay it's just sitting in there sitting in that track doing a very great job of sitting there um, again I run this closer to the bottom we'll get to that in just a second I'm actually going to pop this off this is where we're gonna mount the transducer now for all and actually I'm gonna pull this up Take that out of there for a second. Drop our transducer wire in. Okay. And then I'm gonna just put this right back in those slots. And it's just gonna slot right back in there. Put that little string up on top. All right. Now, this thing is down. Again, it's not completely mounted yet. Oh, we got our transducer sitting on this plate now this guardian shield from Hobie um, is I'm gonna speculate that they spent their time to level it because if you look at the craftsmanship of these kayaks they're they're really well done they're both the 18 and the 19 side by side brand new from the store on the water out of the water everything about these things just looks magnificent they even give you these cool little decals. They're reflective graphics. Now, I'm going to point this out for a second. If you look at your seat, 
and your bow and your stern and all kind of over the place. Well, I, I added these, so I put those where I wanted them. They're above the water line, they look great. You can see them. Um, these things are all really cool because if you happen to be one of those people that wants to rig up and kind of do it at dusk, dawn, twilight, whatever your situation, even at night, um, you've really got a good reflective options all over this thing everywhere. And these are just really fun, you know, it's good quality craftsmanship. So I'm going to say I think we can trust them as far as they've leveled it. Now, I mentioned a second ago. Now, I mentioned a second ago that the Lorance, um, the Lorance video, I'm sorry, the Lorance hardware had a bolt that was kind of, I'm not going to say incompatible, but not optimal for this little situation here. Now, this mount that comes with the Hobie kit is 100% optimal because not only does this piece slot into these tracks like it was made to do, but this bolt that it comes with actually feeds directly through the slotted pieces. So you're not going to worry about, oh, well, it doesn't fit through this slot here. It's guaranteed to fit. There's no way it's going to not fit because it's designed for that. So... Just keep that in mind guys um definitely if you want to do this thing and have it legit now there are pieces that you can go ahead and keep and reuse from that lawrence kit two of them being these rubber washers okay and these metal washers well i'm sorry these are spacers or buffers or whatever you want to call these things not really washers per se um but definitely i use these things when i'm mounting this um transducer just put these right down here by it. Okay. And then we get a perfect time you want to hold this. Get a washer on here. Sorry. If you can just show this here, I'm trying to put this washer in the, in the hole here. Can I get that started? Alright, so. Come over here, feed that through. Oh, I should put a spacer in here. I keep calling these washers, but they're not really. Okay, I'll put that in there. I'm stuck in the track. All right, there we go. Feed that through, goes all the way. All right, there we go. That is looking golden. Let's put this on here. Okay, and again, that is just hand tight for now. We're gonna bring this out. Let me point out this fine sand, guys, because I've cleaned this thing off three times. I even washed it off, and this stuff is just everywhere. Like, I wasn't ready to take this one down. This one hasn't had its once over wipe and wash yet simply because I was going to take it right back out on the water tomorrow. I wasn't planning on leaving when we did um, Monday, um, and I had the same situation going on. I was like, well, we're going to go out Tuesday. I'm just going to leave this on here. Oh, I almost forgot the washer. Um, but for sure, um, definitely cleaning these things out. You want to get them as clean as you can, but you got to resign yourself to the fact that some of this finer sand, unless you get in there, I mean, I told my wife, I said, I was, you know, do we still have the little baby vacuum? I was going to go ahead and vacuum around my Hobie tr tray. And this thing was, the fine sand, man, just gets all over everything. And it's so hard to get out, so hard to get rid of that it kind of irritates me to no end. <laughs> so then you want to straighten this transducer piece, okay? And like I say, this plate is probably flush. It's probably level. It's probably good Good to say I'm going to mount it flush with this plate and it's going to make a good flush connection so when you get it where you want it simply tighten that down oops okay and you don't really have to go too tight you can just make it snug sure that's sitting on there yep sitting on there good now we can come you want to make sure that 
it didn't sit and skew in one way or another. You want to make sure that the back and the front are about level. The more level this is, the more accurate reading is going to be. And again, the closer to this plate you can get it. I know there's people that mount them up here and like a few inches off the plate, but really your water line is not very deep in this thing, guys. Um, because you can see my Hobie graphics and the Hobie name are out of the water line. So you gotta think this thing's only sitting in about six or eight inches of water at the most at any given point in time, if that. Um, so you really want this as far in the water just so it can give you accurate reads on temperature. Um, you know, depth, um, that kind of thing. Um, really, that's what it's for. This is a depth finder. Guys, I, you will never hear me call this a fish. Well, I'm not saying I won't ever do it. I might do it just because that seems to be the lingo these days. But the reason I got one of these Lowrance units was not so I could go find fish somewhere, <laughs> especially on a kayak. Nine times out of ten, it's clear enough or shallow enough or whatever the situation. You, you can probably sight fish these things. It's not really about finding fish so much as um, it is knowing your depth um because a lot can go especially for me i want to go offshore in these guys so probably not going into the dead of winter <laughs> not my thing really but uh i'm going to uh definitely be shooting for early spring um probably as soon as probably the end of february realistically is texas so um i'm going offshore guys um i'm gonna go and hit the rougher water which on calmer days isn't so bad but i've already hit some of the rougher water in the in the bays and around the lydia Ann channel and out just the mouth of the gulf and i'm gonna tell you right now guys i didn't have a problem my dad 75 years old he he only got into kayaking a few years ago he kind of he got me into the kayaking um 12 14 mile an hour wind in the channel and the rough stuff and the current with ships passing by my dad looked at me and said son i don't have any problems with this thing in the wind surprised me because he wouldn't even consider the idea of going offshore with me on a calm day uh, before we'd gone out on the water in these hobies and now he's like all right son where are we going so <laughs> so definitely we're gonna get that footage to you too um we're at this point with the uh install i'm just snugging these down and definitely sorry if i'm talking a lot guys again i am extremely new i'm so green at this i'm practically I'm just definitely a rookie in all aspects of this so um definitely your comments are appreciated as far as you know am i babbling am i getting what you need to see on the installs does that look legit to you guys is that straight yeah it looks pretty good to me actually um let me take some measurements here we could but i don't think i need to it's burning an inch about an inch and a half Yeah, that's pretty much spot on. I got an inch and a half on both sides. So, um, okay, this part is ready to go. And I am going to now take you guys. Okay, guys, we're going to take a look at the front right here. Okay. And I'm actually just going to. Ah, be retrieving this wire for now. Well, I'm gonna show you how I ran this. All right, so I did not have the installation video for this. I basically soldered this on, made connections. I taped it afterwards because the heat shrinks <laughs> didn't do well in here with the amount of material I had to solder and the silver solder I used was getting too hot for the heat shrinks. So I had to retrofit a heat shrink and then I went back with electrical tape just to be sure and tape both ends and then secure it to itself so it's not pulling on this, which looks horrible, but it got the job done. Guess, guess what, guys? My fuse is still good. I didn't blow no fuses the first run on this thing. Um, so we're gonna get this bad boy run and hooked up. And this is the easiest part, really. You, you simply open your hatch here. You're gonna run your Nakwa cable through here. You're gonna come out the center where your Hobie bucket goes, okay? And you're actually gonna have access through this hole to right down here, where you can come through this through hole plug. And 
I am going to do that real quick and give my camera operator back this thing. This might actually be a good point to reset for. All right, guys. Um, so since that I have this up on the truck, I thought it would be easier to reshoot this video since it was in a good position. It's on a cradle. Everything's good. I can reach the top and bottom and really show you guys real good. Problem is, is that this through hole plug right here, um, it was easier to reach it when I could turn this kayak up sideways and kind of get my hand up under here and do some of that nonsense, right? Well, I can't do that in this position. So I'm going to show you how real easy way to um, get this thing done through that through hole. If you'll just take your Lowrance cord and unbind it from your little bread tie that it came with um, and actually drop it through this through hole plug. You just run that in a little bit. And you let's see, you just run it through like that. It should come out over here. I've already done this like two or three. Oh, it's going back behind the block. I've already done this a few times. So, oh, there we go. It's right there. It literally just fed itself right to the center. All right. So you take that and you get that through there, and then you can just take your power in of your um your power connection just wrap that few a couple times you don't have to be crazy because you're just literally you're gonna pull it right through this hole so I'm gonna video this part bam look at that how easy that was and then and like i didn't tie a knot on nothing i just wrapped it up you really you're not pulling too hard it's just connected right it's connected right here at the uh connecting pieces and the reason you want to do it that way is so this piece doesn't hang up in there and get stuck but once you got that through you just leave that sitting there for a second the rest of it up front up in there is already going to be in position um for the battery so you have no problem reaching that either um we're gonna put this guardian plate back on and show you what to do with the wire okay guys we're gonna run your transducer wire through the transducer plate here and you're literally just gonna take it and you're gonna feed it through like this and we're gonna take the plate actually let me see if i can get my I've already mounted this thing to this. Yeah, my camera operator helped me pull that wire up. Now, if you're doing this by yourself, guys, you can 100% just take that. Uh, all right, don't pull. You can take that uh, bundle that it's in if you're not going to use it the way I did, or you can use anything else to kind of feed through that hole to pull your wire out. It really doesn't have to be the transducer cable that was just what i had just bread tie transducer cable well macgyver says this is how you do it um you can use anything you want if you want to keep that bundle for the time being and just feed that bundle through it'll save you a lot of headache as far as having to feed all the cord through i unbundled it because i'll show you why in a second but let's put these three screws back on and get this thing underway and since my three screws are already tucked away and situated this is really nothing for me guys i just grabbed the bucket i've had one hand on this the entire time um line those holes are lined up this magnetic tip ought to do me some justice all right that's in there down two to go i really should not be holding this screwdriver in my hand putting next to my face like that but and the back two you kind of just want to put on a little bit until you get both of them on so you don't get this in kind of cattywampus and then when you get your second one on go ahead and snug it down and then go back to your 
uh, first of the back two and then oh. ah! fell in the bucket and that's why it's a good thing to have the Hobie bucket right under you guys kind of line these up On the money. Okay. Quick hands, guys. But again, you really don't want to be holding the screwdriver while you're doing this part. I mean, realistically, I'm holding it because it's convenient. But if I were to just say, for example, snatch out with this hand instead of this one to go catch that screw, I might have stabbed myself. Not safe. <laughs> I always try to take safety very seriously. Um, OSHA certified, so definitely one of those things where safety always comes first um, in this specific instance be it that I probably shouldn't have this thing in my hand while I'm trying to explain talking with my hands so I don't, you know get myself in the face I know the risk I assume the liability at the end of the day it's me making the decision um, but just be careful when you're using tools of any kind guys even if it's simple as a Phillips screwdriver or you know a caulking gun doesn't matter <laughs> all right so this guardian plate is in place it's ready to go it is not going anywhere these are all snug down Let me double check sure i got the first one all right the wrong way all right but yeah that's snug and they only got to be snug guys they've got their own track to go into they're not going nowhere you don't, you don't want to go crazy with them just hand tighten snug them you know give them maybe a quarter turn past um if that you don't really need you'll feel it you'll feel it kind of get to where you, you know that's not going anywhere it's not if it makes you feel better when you got them like this and before and after you get going you check these you know but it, it's really if they're in there right you're not going to have any problems let's go up top side and get the rest of this stuff since you okay guys once you get this wire run through here you're simply going to put your guardian plate back on or your transducer plate back on you're going to tighten that down, okay? Again, you don't got to get nuts with it. You just got to get snug. You're going to with that, that. Okay, guys, when your plug's sitting on there, the flat piece is going to be against the Hobie, and the this little indented piece is going to go toward your through-hole plug, okay? Once you get to that point, you simply feed your cord through it. Right, simply feed your cord through it, pull that. It comes all the way through. Just kind of keep that uh, gasket piece straight so it's not getting pulled through your hole. You'll be fine. Um, it's just sitting there, so really it's nothing, guys. Um, all right, so let's just have a look. So now this is what we have, okay? Your gasket's on there the right way. Again, if that gasket moves while you're doing this, don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. I'm lucky it stayed. It's the first time it's done that for me yet. So um, we're going to go back to our through-hole plug. Our nice little nifty bin of tools. All right, guys, we're gonna go back to the through hole plug. Now, this is the easy part. Once you've got your wire through to this point, it's all up in here. Don't worry about that for now. You've got this piece sticking through. This plug is designed to slot in this thing a specific way, right? You think that's gonna be where that's going. Hobie's gonna face you on the seat. Well, it's really gonna be under your seat, doesn't matter. But we're gonna take this piece out and we're gonna attach that cord like so. We're going to put it like this, and we're going to slot this into the through hole plug. Like so. We're gonna orient this gasket piece to be on the holes. Ah. Find the holes, guys, come on. Where are we at? There you go. There you go, one, two, Three. It's kind of being a little jank on me. Uh, I don't know how to do this. I'll make this way easier on myself and just connect this to the through hole plug right now. 
make sure it's getting around these things on the back it is it just slots into place there guys see that that's actually a lot better that'll hold it still now when I'm trying to line it up on these plugs I mean I'm sorry on these holes uh, it'll be a better situation to go with I just lost my gas to piss a little bit there okay okay one two three all right she looks like she's in place All right, guys, I've got my through hole plug in over here in the side. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come back and actually get the uh, the wires situated um, in here. So you're going to take what you need out of here in this through hole situation. I don't, actually don't need that much, but I'm going to I'm going to you don't have to do this part. You can leave it in there floating around however you want to do it, however you manage to get it in there. Um, really, that's all preference. I'm going to go ahead and zip tie these. Um, so I can have them out of the way and that they are you know, somewhat nicer. Guys, these Hobies are simply so awesome that they glow. <laughs> All right, let's see, can I get some of that? Yep, yeah. the glowing Hobie. This thing should be a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween. So, we've got to this point We've got our wires come up through the through hole plug. We're going to assemble this last through hole plug. And guys, these buckets, I cannot emphasize this enough. This bucket is amazing for holding all your gear. I haven't lost a single screw through all this. I've dropped a few on accident, but luckily two of them went right back in the bucket. Um, let's see if I can get a light come through that double hole piece. There's the double hole. You can kind of see it. I use this one for these two wires. They were perfect. Got a bug land on me. Stink bug. So I'm gonna hold that. <clears throat> Put this through hole plug in and we'll be right back on. And again, we're gonna keep the Hobie face up. Kind of losing light out here, so I'm trying to hurry, guys. Sorry. Well, I don't want to hurry, but you know. Alright, guys. We are here with this hole through situated. It is snug. Hobie letters out the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that makes a bit of difference to most people, but to me it makes a difference. Now, we're going to come up here to the front, flip the top up. I'm going to get the um, power cord for the knock up here. There you are. Connect you. Just kind of come up here with that. Again, it doesn't matter what side you come up through in the front, just as long as you can reach it, you know where it's at. There we go. Uh, now, the cool thing about this knock let's uh, get in here for a split second. Do you guys see the... Uh, here for the uh the sail i guess it's for a sail attachment or something your Naqua battery will actually mount to that it's pretty cool i'll show you here in a second okay guys the Naqua has this little strap here that's a velcro strap it comes up i'm gonna try to hold this like this uh, Upside down anyway here. I'm gonna try to set this. I'm just gonna try to set this here. Hopefully it's recording. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. Hopefully this GoPro is as good as they say it is. We're simply gonna undo the Velcro on this, attach that around there, snug that back down. That's in there. It's fine. I didn't even need to do that, guys. Um, again, that was purely for my peace of mind so that it's not flopping around in there when I'm in the, the rougher stuff. I'll try to hold this camera. Lost my camera operator again. This plug only goes in one way. It fits in. Oh, let me see. I can't see it from here. Of course. But fear not because it only literally only slots in one way. It's going to be that way. It slots in like this. You simply ah, stay still. You simply uh, 
connect this down. There's an O-ring on there, so it uh, keeps a watertight seal. Don't have to get crazy with it. You'll basically go until you get real hard to turn and you can't turn it. That's probably good, guys. <clears throat> All right, this is in the interest of keeping it. I already tested this on the water, guys. I didn't have any problems with leaks or anything like that. That goes back in there. We threw holes there. Transducer plate is on here. Through hole plug is here. You've got a very limited amount of wire exposed down here. About an inch. Not a big deal. The rest of it's safely tucked away in there. I'm sorry about the light, guys. I don't know if you can see that. Um, your bucket can drop back in here because we are done with that. Now let's come to this ram mount. I'll get that light out of there in just a second. Yes, guys, even though the Hobie actually glows, it wasn't. It wasn't actually glowing. I have a light in there if you, if you didn't notice. My Hobie Jack Lantern of sorts. Yeah, totally guys. I was the first one that did it. Hobie Jack Lantern. That's right here. Sharky McGee TV. First Hobie Jack Lantern. I called it. <laughs> but I hope to see all you guys with your Hobie Jack Lantern pictures at the end of this month. I'm just saying. We're going to do a contest. Whoever's got the best dressed up Hobie is gonna win something special. Um, I don't know, maybe a Bass Pro card or maybe uh, something. We're gonna do something, guys. Um, you're looking <clears throat> for creativity. Mix and match, guys, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that just came out of nowhere. I just thought it was cute with this whole Jack Lantern situation. Um, and my red on is here. All right, so I'm losing light by the second here. There, we got a little bit of light. Hopefully, you can see what's going on here. I've already connected the, the ram bolt to the bottom of this ram mount. Like I say, next weekend I'll go over and I'll probably do a video on this just for the simpleness of having it kind of easy for everybody to understand. Simple, easy to use. You just clamp that, you tighten this down, you adjust that to where you want it, you get this situated. This little deal here, well, actually, I should have just made it easier on myself and connected the ram ball first to show you about this. It's got this little rubber piece on the bottom of it and this little piece that fits in the gear track. You literally put it in there, you tighten it down, you get it snug, you get it to where you want it. Leave a smidge room because you can pull this up and kind of twist. If you lock this down too tight, you're going to have a time getting it off. And when you're in a time crunch, to leave the water because you got to go somewhere and you messed around and put this whole scenario together with the touch of God, as it were, it, it's just no good. So just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, make it easier on yourself later, unless you're planning on leaving that. Um, until today, this is actually a new um, kayak situation for the truck. We were high, we had them on J cradles. Uh, I didn't really like the way that came out too much, but that's it, guys. Uh, let's have a look at it real quick. All right, so I'm gonna hook up these wires in the back. <clears throat> Okay guys, we're wrapping this installation video up and you can't really see anything right now because it's become dark out here all of a sudden. I had to take a short recess for some things, but I wanted to get this thing powered on and show you real quick and the, the GoPro died on me. So without further ado, this is what we just spent all afternoon doing. <laughs> it wasn't all afternoon, but by the time I get finished editing and all that stuff, it's gonna be all afternoon and all night. So <laughs> all afternoon. Um, it's gonna power on for a second. Now I got the avionics package with this because it seemed like an no-brainer. It was an extra 30 bucks if you got the avionics package in the store, uh, as opposed to paying an extra 200 or 300 dollars for the chip afterwards. So um, this is a disclaimer it gives you: do not rely on this as a primary source of GPS. Yeah, we got it. Okay. So it's not on demo mode now, so it's actually not gonna do me any good to sit it like this. All right, let's get it to the uh, settings. I'm gonna go down here to simulator. I'm gonna turn that on. Oh, starting demo. Turn that on. 
Okay, so this is how you'll look at it. It'll kind of be like this in the store. Um, you'll take a look at this little demo here. This is the Hook 2 5 inch. Okay, we just installed the split shot transducer. There you got all your little easy to operate, easy to find fish, easy to afford, easy to install. I can give that a check mark on all these bad boys because I've seen it in its operation. Uh, phone like home screen, simplified menus, full automated sonar tuning. It's got it all, guys. That's all there. Easy to find fish, common sonar. You get like two times more with the spread on the Lowrance coverage, <laughs> they say on the down scan or the sonar, I guess. The, it's a guy reeling in his big looking, what is that? Some type of bass, I guess. I don't know what that is. Um, so this is what the primary viewing looks like now. I absolutely did not like the way it looked when it was like this in the store I asked if you could change it. They said no. I don't think they realized there is a pallet option um, And again to get to this you just pr simply press the enter button while you're on the screen You want to go to the options for and use your navigation buttons to navigate through and you can kind of change up It'll start shooting different there Again, not my favorite. That's not bad. That's actually not too, too terrible. Uh, that is a little bit contrasty for me, but some of these grayer ones, though, I like a lot because you, you really get, like, five and six are really good. Six, probably one of my favorites, really. Also, seven and eight give you that good floor bottom contour, too. Um, you can see these little streaks and stuff up here. Those are like occlusions in the water. There's actually a setting on here where you can make it mark fish. Oh, and then number nine. Number nine is really good about it. Um, and then the rest of these, is, you know, just kind of different colors and contrasts and things. Um, again, I don't really care what the color is so much as what I can see, like when I'm using it. Really, I like this eight because it stands out. It's black and green. It's real easy to see the contrast difference. You can adjust the contrast too on these, but I'm gonna go ahead and lock that in. Fish ID on, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go both. So symbols and depth, it shows you a symbol of the little fish, so I can zoom on that. Uh, oh, I hate this. Okay, well it shows you little symbols of the fish and you, it's hard to make out, but there's little numbers on top of them. It tells you how far down they are. Um, and again, I, I like running that because you just have an idea, especially now if, um, there's a ton of options on this thing, guys, to customize each individual piece the way you want it to. Um, down scan, I actually think, oops. I actually think this one's really cool the way it comes set up. That blue is, is really easy to read. Uh, you can really get a good feel for the textures on the bottom there. Um, again, on the sonar, and I think the down scan, the sonar, primarily the sonar, guys. Um, and again, there's options if you just hit the enter button. And then you can go to the palette, change between all the different kinds of palettes they have. But it's really cool because when you're using this thing now, again, no instructions. I assume they used to give instructions. I don't know. But no instructions these days, but nothing. But uh, that's why I'm kind of doing this for you too. Um, I did notice, guys, that when you're on grassy bottom or sandy bottom or muddy bottom or oyster shale, this on the bottom here actually changes and if you know what you're in it's a whole lot easier to start mapping that out and understanding what you're looking at when you're out there when you get familiar with this thing i've never used the Lorenz for this is my first Lorenz. i used it on the on the water um i didn't really get into it too much because i was you know just trying to get the footage of the the kayak handling and you know getting some of that with my dad and then of course it was our first time out so i was so excited i just probably let my noob show a little bit too much on all that but for sure, this bottom here is important because as I was in shallower, clear water where I could see the bottom and I noticed, oh, like, how come the bottom's changing on here? And I'd look over, oh, we're in sand all of a sudden, or oh, we're in mud, or oh, we're in grass. You will actually start understanding what that means on the screen. So when you see your screen change, you can probably get a good idea what kind of bottom you're fishing on. And... You know, that might not make a whole lot of difference to some people, but to me, that is a lot of information that I just absolutely am going to eat up because you got your water temperature over here in the corner and uh, you got your depth, you got your speed. Now, my speed is going to be set to knots. It's on MPH right now. I got it on demo mode, guys. 
I've set my speed to knots because nautical miles is the nautical way of speed. Um, we're on the water. It, it's good to kind of get yourself familiar. Um, a knot is a, approximately, well, I think 1.51, I think. It's 1.51 miles per hour, I believe, is what a knot translates to. But it's kind of a good idea to get um, used to referring to wind speed and uh, movement speed on the water, like whether you're in a kayak or a boat or anything else in terms of knots, because nautical terms are, of course, what you're going to use in the nautical setting. So, um, again, MPH is fine. If you want to go miles per hour, that's 100% you're able to do that. You can go degrees in Fahrenheit or Celsius, whatever your preference is. Again, Celsius being the zero point being freezing, whereas Fahrenheit freezing is 32 degrees. So, there's a little bit of a difference there. If you're used to working in um, degrees in Celsius, um, by all means, you know, you can do that. Uh, if, that, if that's more comfortable for you, you can change the depth setting. Um, if we go to inner mode, more options. Ah, no, no. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's in mode. It's on the top top option. Uh, range, it's auto, so, but it's, say just for fishing in 10 feet of water. Maybe 15 feet, maybe 20 feet. Well, this is not helping me. Okay, so let's just go to eight feet. Well, you can kind of get an idea when it changes, but this isn't really relevant because it's not actually showing the bottom until down here. But it's on demo again, like I say, guys. I'll go ahead and do a little another tidbit on the water when we go tomorrow, but um, <sighs> that's about it, guys. I'd call this a successful install. The... Uh, Hobie bucket here guys saved my life. This thing did not let me drop a single bolt or lose a single tool. Uh, thank you Hobie because I don't know how many people thought hey I should use this to catch my stuff in but uh, definitely a winner. A winner. Now let's re-secure these straps. Again, um, the uh, excuse me, the Nakwa is secured in there. I secured it to the sailing pole. Uh, I, th I think that's for sale. I'm not 100% sure. I know people use their uh, power pole that shoved through there and anchor i would never get caught dead using a power pole through any of these holes on the kayak itself um just my own preference i don't feel like that's something you should be putting anything into anyway um i know guys like to use those carts and stuff uh again 100 percent at your discretion uh i don't use scupper carts um because my dad and i are usually together anyway uh i won't let him go out by himself and he expect me not to go out by myself and so, on the off chance that I ever end up going out by myself, because um, I'm definitely probably 80% more likely to do it than he is, I will probably still not use a scupper cart. I'll have a way to get that down to the water safely. But uh, this is uh, gonna be the video for today, guys. Sorry it got dark on me here, but I'm, I'm kind of glad it did. I get a good look at this screen and show you um, some of the stuff on it. Uh, but outside of that, I think we are about good here. Um, again, guys, I'm Sharky McGee. This is Sharky McGee TV. And uh, thanks for making us, you know, helping us catalog our journey into this. Um, getting started. It's, it's been a process, I'll tell you what, but it's been a lot of fun. And uh, part of that is because I'm so new, um, I'd like to, sh you know, kind of document as much of this as I can and show as many new people who are kind of on the fence about, well, it's a lot of money to drop at one time on something, you know, but I'm really interested in getting into this. <clears throat> I can tell you right now, um, this is probably the single-handedly only major purchase in my entire life, guys. And I bought a lot of things in my day. Um, but this is the only purchase I've ever made in my entire life where I felt 100% at ease about it. Um, and that's, you know, when I buy a new car, when I buy anything, I'm, I'm always like super, super, super kind of combative about the process. And I... I'm kind of, uh, and even when I get it, I get in it, I like it, I don't like it, I don't know what I feel, you know, I'm like, uh, did they get me? I don't know, they said this was going to be good. Um, <clears throat> you know, I really, I'm kind of one of those who doesn't really take a whole lot of words for a lot of things anymore these days. I, I like to kind of explore for my own um, self to kind of, you know, find what I like. And um, definitely, I can tell you right now that Hobie is something that's going to be a family name for us. So, um, what can I say? My first time kayak, it was a it was a Hobie. I'm not regretting that. As a matter of fact, 
I think if I would have gone any other direction and seen it side by side, I, I might be upset. Not because those guys aren't great and all, but just because for me, especially being in this thing, it fits me perfectly. I mean, <laughs> I just, I'm like a fish in the water. <laughs> I told my dad that the other day. I'm like a hobie in the water over here. This thing's just zipping through everything, but it really is. They are great at this. So until next time, guys, remember, play hard, fish harder.